Hello everyone, welcome. This is Jason Rohr for 3D Solutions and I'm really excited about announcing a new product that we have. Uh, it is a great hammerhead, uh, kind of in lieu of uh, Shark Week that is happening right now. Uh, and I am a big fan of sharks and love, love, love to uh, play around with uh, with uh, model making them. And fortunately have been uh, linked up with Jeff Cavanaugh of Farallon Arts who has done an immaculate job of texturing this particular great hammerhead. Uh, just to kind of touch on what we have here. So first off, uh, we have textures that are 4K, which does include a, uh, a color map, a diffusion or ambient occlusion map, a luminance layer, and a normal map. So what you'll end up with is a very good looking up close and personal display on this uh, particular model. And uh, right now I actually have uh, uh, no subdivision added into it, but if I come over here to the rig, yes, it's rigged, it's fully controllable, um, but I've also used a little bit of Cinema 4D's magic on this, so I'll kind of talk through it real quick here. So. Uh, ultimately, what you have here is the level detail renderer, which will give you the uh, rendering uh, once you've gone into the picture viewer and rendered it out. Uh, recommend that you use at least a level, level detail of one or greater. Uh, it just gives you that really nice final touch, but it does increase render time. So I leave that to default to two. But what I'll do here is show you this is the base model of the Great Hammerhead. Um, it was created as a, uh, a box sculpture. And then uh, for the uh, UV mapping, uh, we went ahead and, and added one, uh, baked one layer subdivision into it. So uh, this is the lowest polygon that you'll get out of it. It does include some teeth, and I'll talk about that in a second, but you have the ability of increasing the level of detail in the editor if you're trying to look and see how it actually will end up looking when you're uh, running through maybe a preview or whatnot. Uh, so you have that ability, and I allow you to crank that up uh, to two times subdivision. Uh, I don't recommend you leave it too high though because it will start bogging down, especially when we start doing a, a swim uh, scene. So what you also have here are several controls and a couple of morphs. So in the control section, we have speed, nose wiggle, tail wiggle, and jaw control. Now you have speed, nose, nose wiggle, and tail wiggle in the standard fish rig, which I have uh, adjusted and created a hammerhead rig. Uh, and normally you would have to come in here and select the main controller, and then you get to be able to play with these functions. Well, I've made it easier for you. You can just select the main root body, which has the expressor tag, and boom, you have your speed. You have everything adjustable right here. When you take the model in Cinema 4D and you go and check it out, you'll notice it does nothing. Well, that's because the timeline does need to play. So I've weight mapped uh, everything the best that I could to give it a really nice, clean, smooth effect. It does have some drag effectors in here for the dynamics that does allow for a really nice uh, fluid uh, swim. So uh, those have been adjusted. I just want to make sure that you have note of that. So this is not the this is not taking a uh, fish. Uh, fish character just rigging it and saying it's done this is actually going uh, quite a few extra steps to make sure that things look correct when you place it into your your scene so hitting the play tool will allow you to, to jump right into it and i'm going to come back here to the root folder and you can see as we increase speed it increases the speed of the shark things move nice and fluid uh, there's not a whole lot of sloppiness going on at all uh, I, f I find that 60% uh, or less seems to be fairly uh, realistic. Uh, you can increase nose wiggle if you like. Uh, and just to show you the rig, this is the rig that we're using. Uh, same, you can increase the tail wiggle if you really like it swinging. But uh, generally, you know, you, you're probably going to be living somewhere in the, the lower realm of control. So... With that, we also have a jaw control feature, and the jaw control feature does include a morph tag that allows some uh, adjustment here at the base of the jaw so that it has kind of a nice weight map to it. Uh, inside the mouth, you have a whole bunch of little spiky teeth, just as a great hammerhead would have. You also have um, a textured interior for the mouth.
And as we uh, we kind of step through this, I'm going to go ahead and close the mouth. You can sit there and animate it to your heart's desire. Uh, I include a couple of, of more. Some of these are simple bulge uh, tools. So you can shrink the, uh, the uh, height if you like. You can shrink the length and create the right size shark. If you need a smaller shark and you want to do a quick uh, scaling adjustment, you can use these uh, effectors for that. Um, and at the same time, you also will have a nice clean output in the swim still. Uh, and that's because what you're doing is you're actually affecting the, uh, you're not affecting anything negatively with the, uh, the bones and uh, everything is uh, grouped as a skin. So same thing, you can make him a really long and slender shark if you want for your scene. Uh, just quick, easy controls. Uh, I always like to be able to make things fun and, and realistic. Uh, we also have some uh, gill flares, uh, which is going to be real nice if you're trying to run a scene that you want to uh, have the shark uh, look like he's, you know, either breathing heavy or uh, he's in attack mode. So, you know, throw a couple of keyframes in there and and uh, and away you go. You'll be able to get this, you know, real neat uh, gill flare effect. So. I'm going to go ahead for now and delete those tracks because we don't need them. But it'll uh, kind of flare out the rest of, of his head here. So, so uh, that'll be kind of a nice addition. Of course, naturally, one of the things you're probably going to do uh, more commonly is you're going to want to drop this guy into a spline. And I've also tried to make that simple too. So you have the align the spline tool embedded into your uh, controls, which uh, uh, it is mapped for the uh, kind of correct um, orientation to be able to run it into a spline. So let's say we want to kind of swim out here and, and do something like this. Uh, so what I'll go ahead and do is uh, some of those terms will maybe a little tight. So let's do that. Um, and let's just kind of raise and lower a couple of these points just so we have some some depth to it. And while I'm here, I'm going to do that. Okay, so he's he's going to want to swim up and down on all this. And I have a pretty long timeline, but just to show you as a quick example. So I'm going to come into the main rig under the, the spline path. I'm going to drop the spline. Don't be afraid when you see this. Uh, this is a, a natural... Um, uh, artifact of whenever you put uh, the shark anywhere. In fact, sometimes when you drag it around, you'll get uh, a similar effect. So all you normally need to do is just restart the timeline and away you go and you're back to it. So uh, I will go ahead and say position one here and set a keyframe and let's just go here and say position 100 and just for the sake of doing so, uh, this is probably just making it a little bit uh, less painful, but we'll go ahead and do that. And it will tangentially follow this. So as you see, uh, it will actually try and follow the rig of whatever spline you've made, which will give you a real nice effect. So it doesn't take a lot of work to get this thing to work. Uh, obviously it will take a little bit of work to get it to follow exactly what spline you're looking for. You, you will have to adjust your speeds. You'll want to probably play with the actual speed of the shark so it matches uh, whatever path you're following. But uh, ultimately, you're going to be able to get this really nice output. And, uh, you know, the best part is that this is an outstanding looking specimen. Uh, so whenever you render this out, uh, and mind you, this is the default render with a default light. I have nothing going on here yet. So as soon as you start adding global illumination and ambient occlusion, things really start popping. Uh, there's a gorgeous specular into this shark. So uh, as you uh, as you go through and start making uh, some of your here, I'll also do this, and you start making some of your renders, you'll you'll see how how beautiful it really is. Uh, again, my compliments to Jeff Cavanaugh. He is an amazing artist. He's even added in some muscle tones into the body of the, the shark. Uh, really nice uh, weathering and scratching uh, because when you're talking about something like a big hammerhead uh, like this, he's, uh, he's definitely going to have some battle scars. And, uh, uh, of course, all the detail into it. And the normal map will really bring all of this out. So... 
So any any time you're trying to make a, a really cool uh, ocean scene, I highly encourage that you consider purchasing this shark. Uh, it will be available uh, in the description. Uh, I am offering it at a limited time for $100, um, and it will then uh, transition to about $150 as a uh, model for sale commercially. Uh, highly encourage that you guys consider this. It's a whole lot of fun. A uh, lot of work has gone into this, uh, both on my end and on Jeff Kavanaugh's end. Uh, we've we've really gone out of the way to try and make this look really nice and make it useful for you. And you also have a procedural texture um, on the eye, so uh, so no no four K texture here. This is as tight in as you want to get. You're going to have all these gorgeous textures. The model was built with Cinema 4D R17, uh, and it was textured using 3D Coat. If you have any questions, have any interest, I highly recommend checking out my website. Uh, this shark will be available. And uh, as always, happy modeling, guys.